Welcome everybody to the church. Welcome to our Sunday service. It's great to see you, everybody here. Um, and also warm welcome to everybody who's online. Um, thank you for joining us. So today we will continue um, the series on discipleship that we've been doing. Um, and on the series of discipleship, last week we, we, we had started the topic on evangelism. Um, yeah. And so we will continue um, the part two of that today. So we will continue on the topic of evangelism. All right, before I continue, does anybody know what we talked about last week? If you were here, anyone, you can uh, you can shout out or I can even pass the mic to you. The gospel. The gospel, yes, thank you. Thank you, yes, the gospel. Anybody else remember anything from last week? Good news, bad news, great news. Good news, bad news, great news, yes, thank you. Yeah. So it's it's great to have you guys here. So we will we will continue with that because the the whole uh, the story of the Bible is so beautiful. It's so important for for us in our faith, but also for us to to share to others, to share with others, right? And um, we'll still keep this simple. So last time it was we kept it simple, like good news um, that God created us uh, in His image. He made us for a relationship with Him. Um, right, and that was a good news that he had a plan and a purpose for our lives—a good plan and purpose. But then the bad news was that um, as sin entered, because Adam and Eve sinned, you know, and the enemy tempted them, and they sinned. And because of their sin, we also make wrong choices and we rebel against God. We disobey God. You know, we have all sinned and fallen short of His glory. And that's the bad news. And because of that sin, what has happened? Eternal death came into our lives. Eternal separation from God. Right. But the great news is. Um, God gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. And He came and died on that cross. And then when we put our trust in Him, when we put our faith in Him, in the work of His blood on the cross for us, our sins are forgiven and we are redeemed and we are saved, right? And that is the great news, that we are restored back into a relationship with God. Not just, it, not just after we physically die, but even while we are living, we are restored into our relationship with Him. Um, and we are, we, 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 we are able to have a relationship with Him again. Um, and He's alive, right? And so that was, in short, the good news, bad news, and the great news that we talked about. Um, today we're going to talk about testimonies, alright? So this is the part two. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So, when we talk about testimonies, I want us to... Uh, this verse is from Revelation 12, 11, um, And it says, They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Alright, and this is um, when uh, Jesus comes back the second time um, and he comes back. And... This verse is beautiful because it talks about um, that we triumph over the enemy because of what Jesus has first and foremost done on the cross for us, right? He he defeated that. He defeated that. He has he has um, victory, um, and we also hear that they, it talks about the word of their testimony and how our testimony um, of what Jesus did in our lives can be so powerful to others. Um, so. What what is a testimony? I want to ask you guys. What what do you think is a testimony? Feel free to shout out. What do you think is a testament? Go ahead, Anybody? Anyone? Testimony. 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 Their lives and their beliefs. Their lives and beliefs. Yes, people give testimonials, right, about their life and, and what they believe. Okay. Proof for you. Proof for okay, it's like an evidence of your faith. Okay, yeah. Our story with Jesus. Yes, our story. That's also correct. It is. It is our story. Yeah, and it's it's all the things that you guys mentioned. So you guys, you guys already know this, right? Um, I love what. Uh, Actually, there's a, a pastor, I, I'm sure you guys might know him, uh, Pastor Andrew Gardner from the Vine Church here in Hong Kong. And uh, I was attending one of his, one of his Sunday sermons. And um, I remember him saying this. He said, only in knowing God's story can we find our story. Right? And that was so beautiful. That's, that stuck with me because a lot of times we're so focused on, on ourselves, like what is our story. But when we really focus on Jesus' story, 
when we focus on the gospel bible we we find where we are where we fit in where we are in his in his plan in his sovereign plan right and so the testimony is true it's it's, it's, it's a story it's a story about our lives um, and how Jesus has impacted our lives in a Christian sense of view, how Jesus has impacted our lives um, to live out a relationship with Him day by day. It's, like, it's as simple as that. Testimony is simply your life story, your walk with Jesus, what He has done in, in your life, you know, and how He is walking with you in your life currently as a relation in a relationship with Him. Right? So when we when we talk about testimonies, testimonies can be very powerful, right? Sometimes um, when even when I do evangelism and when we do evangelism at our organization, or even when you are talking with friends that we know, you know, sometimes people can get very uh, defensive, or it's very hard to break the ice with like, you know, like let me tell you this, like hey, you you have sinned and, and you've made a wrong choice, you need to repent. It's it's hard, and it, it can come across sometimes as very judgmental too, right? Um, but God, God, God is so beautiful. He gives us ways to be able to share with people. And testimony is such a powerful way because you're telling your story, right? You're saying, hey, listen, there was a point in time I used to struggle with this, 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 and this is what Jesus did in my life. Um, and so testimony, whenever we share a testimony to people, um, I usually think about, you know, my life or like a small section of my life before Jesus, you know, what things that I had to deal with or things that I was struggling with, maybe a situation in my life that I was really struggling with. You know, what Jesus then, I talk about what Jesus did in that time. You know, how did he reveal himself to me? What did he do to help me overcome that struggle, help me overcome that situation, you know? And now, because of that, how am I living my life with Jesus in that area of my life? So that's like a very simplified, obviously you can talk about a lot of things, but that's like a very simplified way of being able to talk about your testimony to people. Um, sometimes when we give testimony, we have to be careful not to glorify the sin, right? We, 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 we glorify God, you know, it's, we, we have to, one of the things in testimonies that we have to always be aware is not to glorify ourselves, all right? And um, sometimes I tend to do that as well, like, oh, I struggle with this and explain the struggle so much that Jesus is just like, at the end, I just fit him in. No, it's not that. It's, the testimony is supposed to be about Jesus, what Jesus did what Jesus does in our lives, right? And so, whenever whenever we share, we have to be aware. Okay, am I glorifying myself or am I glorifying God? You know, am I glorifying the sin or am I glorifying what Jesus has done? How He has redeemed me from that, and how beautiful and how faithfully He's allowing me to live in that relationship with Him. And that is the focus of a testimony. All right, as much as it is your story, but the glory is to God, the glory is to Jesus' story and what He has done in our lives, right? Um, and so, to, to give an example of that, I'm going to ask Michelle to come up and she's, she's going to share a short example of her testimony. So. Thank you. So I can testify that um, I have seen the glory of God in my life. So for 11 years, uh, I struggled with um, severe allergies and sickness. So much so that my lungs used to be filled with fluid that I almost um, was dead from not being able to breathe um, at one point. And I can testify that Jesus has healed me 100% completely. I am fully 100% healed from all of this sickness, all of these al allergies, and because of that, what Jesus did is I can live a life here in Hong Kong with a healthy body. I can um, live without this sickness and I am fully healed because of Jesus. Yeah, so, oh, sorry, that loud. Um, okay, that's better. Um, yeah, when you're at this church, you get to do multiple things at the same time. <laughs> um, but yeah, praise be to God. Um, yeah, that was a beautiful, so it was short. I know uh, 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 Michelle purposely kept it short because uh, we have like a limited time for the sermon, right? But the idea is like, obviously when you're talking, you're gonna go more into detail to that person, right? And I know this Michelle story and I, I've, I've heard this from, when we went to Canada, so I've heard this from other people too, when like she had an allergy as a kid and she had to take a lot of medicine and she couldn't eat a lot of things. But now in Hong Kong, 
she eats everything. She eats more mala than I do, <laughs> you know, when we go to Tamzai and noodles and stuff like that. And yeah, that is that is a powerful testimony. And like God brought healing. And I've heard this story in fullness, so, I, so I'm just paraphrasing. But, you know, God really healed her of that completely. And she's able to enjoy a life and mission and, and even in a place like Asia, right? And so those are some things. Like, for example, I'll give my own testimony. One of, one of my testimonies is... Um, growing up, I used to, especially when I entered my 20s, when I was in my 20s, um, I was very ambitious and a lot of my ambition also stemmed from a fear of not having enough, a fear of um, not having a solid future, right? And so I used to have a fear of finances for quite a long time um, that, you know, like I need to make a lot of money. I need to study hard because if I don't study hard, I won't get a good job. If I don't get a good job, I won't I won't make um, a, a good amount of money. If I won't make a good amount of money, I'll not I'm not going to enjoy life. So that was the lie that was rooted in my life. Okay, I didn't know that for a long time, but that was how my how I used to sometimes operate in my decisions. Um, and God really freed me from that. And how did He do that? In 2015. And I used to love traveling, so I had a, I had a really good job back then. Um, and whenever I would take breaks, I would travel across Asia, I would backpack across Asia. And I tried to go to the country up north, above Hong Kong, okay? And I tried to go there, but I couldn't get, I couldn't get a visa on time. And so I ended up coming to Hong Kong instead in 2015 for two weeks because Hong Kong had visa on arrival. Um, and my aunt, she lives here, and she's been in ministry for almost 20 years now, over 20 years maybe, yeah. And I was staying with her, and towards the end of my time, she literally sat me down and she asked me, how's your relationship with God, you know? And you know that look sometimes when an elder person who's like filled with the Holy Spirit will just sit you down and give you that look, you know, you cannot, <laughs> you cannot lie or you cannot go anywhere. It's just, it's just so... Like she just saw right through me, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I go to church on Sundays and you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. But she really spoke to me and then she shared about, oh, and she shared about this program called Discipleship Training School here in Hong Kong for six months. And she said that, why don't you consider doing that, right? Why don't you consider doing that? You've spent so many years of your life studying. Why don't you give just six months? Because I had done engineering and MBA and I was working after that. And in my, I said, just to be polite to her, I said, okay. But in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking, no way. There's like, no way I'm going to quit my job and do this thing. Like, there's no degree, nothing. And so I went back to India. But when I went back to India, um, God kept speaking to me. And God kept speaking to me through the vis vision of Peter inside the boat. And how instead of Peter, I was inside the boat. And I was not willing to come out on the water, even if Jesus was calling me. And I used to keep seeing that vision. And I used to keep, whenever I used to read my Bible, that, that whenever I used to talk to somebody, they would bring that story up. And that way God kept speaking to me and challenging me to step out of my comfort, to step out of my boat, out of my security. Um, and so finally, after a long time, I said yes. I did the discipleship training school and God really broke my heart. Uh, he humbled me. Um, and then after that, I went back to India. But then again, God called me and He's called me and I've been in serving in ministry and missions for almost uh, almost five years now actually in Hong Kong um, and yeah and 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 it's it's so amazing like I don't even know how I have lasted so long to be honest because you know like our organization it's it, it doesn't pay it doesn't pay its uh, staff it's it's a voluntary but God has been so faithful um, and he's provided for me in miraculous ways those are whole different testimonies um, but he but in serving in the five years that I've been serving here in ministry he broke that hold that the power of money had over me. He broke the hold of like the fear of finances. Like So now even I'm like, whether it's ministry or whether someday I go back to doing something else, whatever it be, like, you know, I'm so confident that, you know, God's my provider. He's gonna give me enough for what I need. And he is the one who I look to, he's my provider. And he really broke that in me as I kept serving. So that's like a testimony of mine, right? So testimonies, in short, it can be, oh, this is a picture of uh, when I was in missions, I went to Mongolia for about a month to distribute Bible 
um, and we went to the most remote place in Mongolia where for miles and miles there's just flat land and there's maybe one house with a bunch of goats and cow like cattle and all of that <laughs> horses so we like just to go to one house to share the gospel we had to travel for like like an hour or two hours by road like so and then we stop at one house go all the way to another till like that um, but it was so it was so beautiful to see people receive the gospel in their language we had uh, Bibles in their language. We had like a like a gospel tape recorder and that played in in their language itself And so um, it was very beautiful and so like yeah, it's 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 been so fulfilling But at the same time God has been humbling me and breaking uh, My my trust on on my own ability or on finances on security, right? All right, so without taking much more time. Like, can we go to the next slide, please? I'm going to talk about um, why do we share the gospel, right? Why should I share? Why should I share my testimony? You know, I'm talk I want to talk about the motivation of our heart. I already sort of talked about that when I was talking about glorifying Jesus. So the aim of our testimony should be to give glory to Jesus, right? Um, and it is something that is motivated out of love, okay? Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Join. Oh. So it is something that is motivated out of love. Um, I always, yeah, I, I give this example all the time. Um, it's like if somebody, if my, you know, at my base, my building caught on fire, right? And if we, at our base we have like little children as well and stuff, like I wouldn't just be like, oh, it's okay, it's just catching fire, right? I would, we would be running around either calling, um, uh, calling the fire extinguisher people or trying to get people out, you know, or trying to like get people out of the building as much as possible. We'll not just be like, if we love people, if we love someone, we're not going to be like, oh, okay, it's okay that the building's on fire, it's okay, right? we'll, we want to get them out. So I always give this example, it's the same. We face, people around us face eternal death, right? They, they face eternal condemnation. And Jesus is the only one who can rescue them. And we, we as people, when we are motivated out of love, we want to point them to Jesus. We want to point them to the one, the only one who can save them, all right? Um, the next example that I like to also give is that of, of a doctor. Uh, Jesus, if you read the Gospels, Jesus is, is he, he says, you know, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but who? But the sick um, who needs a doctor, right? We all have the disease of sin in our lives. We all carry that. Um, and Jesus is the only healer. He is, he is our healer. He's the only one. He can heal us from that disease of sin in our lives. And so we point the story towards him. We tell people, hey, we know this great doctor who can heal us from eternal death, who can save us from eternal death, and that is Jesus. Um, and lastly, the only thing that I want to share is from um, the verse from Romans. Can we put that up? Yeah. So I really love this verse, and um, you can read. I can. I'm read. I'll read it out. Romans ten thirteen to fifteen. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. All right? It's such a beautiful verse. Um, we often, you know, uh, I don't know, I've heard this saying, many sometimes I get a little annoyed whenever somebody says, like, oh, the only Bible that people read is you. And I'm like, no, that's not true. If people just read my life, that is sad. That's like, because I'm a sinner, only saved by grace. People need to read Jesus, you know, and uh, yes, that it's true that often it's our actions also lead people in wanting to know about Jesus, but we need to also be able to share with people. We need to be able to allow them to hear, give them the opportunity to hear the good news, the good story about Jesus. And like Paul puts it so beautifully here, right? Like how can they hear if we don't speak? If the people who have that hope, who have that joy, who have um, that salvation, if we keep remain shut and if we don't speak, how are others going to hear? How is your colleague going to hear? How maybe they're going to read your life and maybe one in, I don't know, 10 people will be like, oh, I really like the way he lives his life. I wonder what's his belief and ask you. But for most people, like they need to hear. They need to hear what is the hope of salvation that we have, right? And, and how can they hear without us sharing? 
So that's why testimonies are, are can be beautiful, a beautiful entry point, a beautiful door for us to go in and say, hey, this is what I used to struggle with in my life, and I know Jesus helped me out in this time, and I know that he can help you. And that's such a beautiful way to, to allow them to hear about the gospel. Um, yeah, we, we are called to love God and love others, um, and... This, this commandment is, is so beautiful because it calls us to know God, know God personally in our own lives, but also to love others. And one of the most loving things that we can do for somebody is to actually tell them about the gospel, to tell them about the story of Jesus, to tell them through our testimony or through the good news, the bad news and the great news about Jesus Christ. Whether they accept or reject it, it's up to them. It's their free will. It's their choice. That's okay. But our responsibility is to give them that opportunity to be able to hear the gospel at least for once in their lives. Um, all right, and lastly, um, when we are sharing our testimony, we want to be also um, keeping our spiritual ears open to hearing God's voice, um, and that is so important. The Holy Spirit, uh, He will often give us direction, even when we share our testimonies, when we share our stories, the Holy Spirit will be nudging us to focus on maybe like a particular topic or to focus on a particular word that might bring something to that other person. Um, I remember just recently I was teaching uh, in a, for a program called School of Worship in, in Cambodia. Um, and one of my, our leaders, she runs it. And I was speaking in, in, in that uh, teaching and I was talking about the nature and character of God. And for some reason, um, you know, one of the character of God as a comforter kept coming up to me. And I was like, I can talk about so many things. I was talking about God being all powerful, all, you know, knowing, everywhere, present, and, you know, He's eternal and all of this. But God kept nudging that the comforter, 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 and that kept coming to me. So I just, like, as I was sharing, I just stopped. And I was like, I, and I told the class on Zoom, I said, I'm sorry, but, you know, like, I keep getting highlighted the word comforter. Um, and, and like, I don't know if this is for everybody or if someone here, but God really wants to, to comfort you and to, to bring his comfort to you because he's a comforter. And later I got to know that one of the translators, uh, she was a Vietnamese girl, her, I think her grandmother passed away that very day, that very morning, and their whole family was mourning. It was very hard for her to be in a class and she just broke down and, and everybody else kind of like came around and prayed for her and ministered to her, right? And that was so beautiful, like if I had not kept my ears open and if I had like not been brave to say that like, I might have been wrong but I like God gave me um, the boldness to be able to say that and because of that there's a release of his Holy Spirit there's a release for ministry to be carried out in that room right so we want to be able to keep hearing God even as you are sharing our testimonies yes we are speaking with our mouths but keep, let's keep our spiritual ears open to hearing what God might have to say specifically for that person. Each person is different. Your testimony can touch different people in different ways, right? So when you're sharing with someone in particular, you want to be also listening to the Holy Spirit. What is it that for this specific person, what is in my testimony that for this specific person, that God, that you will speak something, that you will unlock this person's heart, right? So God gives us specific words, words of knowledge, words of wisdom to unlock people's hearts. That's why we need to be listening to the Holy Spirit even as we share. All right, and, and the last verse um, that I want us to look at is 1 John 4, 18. I love this verse. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Um, yeah, when we love God, when we love others, you know, there fear has no hold on us we do not have to fear of being rejected we don't have to fear of what people will think about us because we love god when our sharing is rooted in god's love and love for other people fear has no place um so today i want us like sort of what we did last week we're gonna pair up into two people and we're gonna practice sharing testimonies so just for today because this is a this is a service Please try to keep your testimony short within five minutes. So maybe like around five minutes, one person can share. And then you give the chance to the other person to also be able to share their testimony. So even you, before you start sharing, you can think of something that you would like to share from your life that God has done in your life, okay? Um, and yeah, like I said, let's glorify Jesus. Let's focus on what Jesus has done, right? And so we're going to practice sharing our testimonies right now. So 
can we pair up into two? We're going to take some time and we're going to share our testimonies with each other. So five minutes each, all right? Five minutes for one person, five minutes for the other person.